Hey what's up, welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial, in this one I'm going to show you how to code up a minimal music player app. So we can browse through a playlist of songs and perform the basic functionalities like playing, pause, resume and a seek bar to control where in the song you are. For the theme and design let's code it up in both light and dark mode with a touch of neomorphism. So just before we start let's have a little bit of a visual plan about what we're about to code up. So we're just going to have two pages. One is for the playlist to display all the songs and then we can click on a song to go to the song page and have the playback controls. And then we're going to have the audio player as a provider to sort of provide all of the different data that we need. So for the first page it's just going to provide a list of songs and then when we go to the song page it's going to provide what the current song that we're playing and the playback controls as well. And also we are going to have actually one more page for the settings page where we can just control the dark mode and light mode. So I've ended up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page in my main function I'm running my app which brings us to this home page and I've got this in a separate folder called pages just to keep it organized and this should just be a blank scaffold so you should just have a white blank app like this. Now let's just start off with the theme so I'm going to create a new folder called theme and let's start off with the light mode and so you can choose your own colors but you can just also copy my ones so if you create a theme data here you can specify these different colors so background primary secondary and I also like to specify the inverse primary. So these are all just different shades of grey which you can play around with. But let's create one for the dark mode as well. And make these colours a bit darker. So we can always fine tune these colors later on. So one thing we're going to do is in the main file, you can see in the material app, we can specify this theme. So if I give it light mode and nothing changed, we should actually come to the home page and let's actually give it a background color. So we can say theme dot of context, go to the color scheme and you can see there's all the options for what we specified before. So for this, let's just give it the background color. And if I save this, you can see it changed to a little bit of a light gray. So if I change this to dark mode, then it will be much darker. We want to switch between these two modes. So to do that, let's create a theme provider. Open up your terminal and let's add in this package. So flutter pub add provider for some simple state management. And let's fill out this class. So class theme provider extend, extends change notifier. So initially let's make it light mode. And let's create a getter. And also a boolean just to see if it's dark mode or not. So this here will just check if the current theme is equal to the dark mode and return true or false. And then we also need a setter to set the theme. And this notify listeners is to update the UI. And then lastly, we just need a toggle theme method. So if the current theme is the light mode, then change to dark mode and vice versa. Sweet, so if you come back to the main.dart file, when you run this app, we need to wrap this in a change notifier provider and give it our theme provider. And so now we can say instead of just light mode or dark mode, we can go to our provider and get the theme data. Cool, 
cool so just save it and run it again and everything should be working fine now we're going to need a way to trigger this toggle theme method to change to dark mode so let's go to our home page and i'm just going to create an app bar real quick and if you just create a blank drawer you can see there's a menu icon in the, in the top left so just click it and you can open this blank drawer we're going to code this up now just to keep our code nice and organized i'm going to create this in a separate folder called components so this is where i just like to put the different widgets for this drawer let's give it our background color and just to see the changes that we're making if i come back to the home page we can type my drawer and you can see there it is so let's just import and so in this drawer i'm just going to create a column and so let's just have a basic layout. So let's have a logo at the top. So for the logo, I'm just going to use a music note icon here. And for these tiles, let's use a list tile. Maybe we could use a bit of padding. Cool. And let's do the same thing for settings. Awesome, that's looking pretty good. Now when I click on this home tile on tap, we just want to pop the box so we're already at the home page so if i click this i just want to pop the drawer now when it comes to the settings i want to pop the drawer but i also want to navigate to the to the settings page so we haven't created this settings page yet so let's just do that real quick And let's come back over here and import what we just created. And there we go. We can now navigate to the settings page. So let's fill this out. In the body, I'm just going to create a basic container. And let's just decorate it up a little bit. And main thing here is the row. I want to have a switch. And I'm going to use a Cupertino switch, which is the Apple style one. So if I just show you real quick, if I say false for the value and save it, you can see there's the button. And if I change it to true, you can see the switch becomes green. So this one is going to be true or false. So what we're going to do is go to our theme provider. And you can see is dark mode. And for the unchanged, go to the provider and we can go toggle theme. And so if I save this, you can toggle between the two. Sweet. And let's just clean this up and decorate this to our liking. Add some padding and margin. And of course, our border radius needs to be curved. By the way, so you see how we're in dark mode. Now you can see the different shades of gray that it currently is. If you don't like it, you can go to this dark mode file and control and change up the colors to your liking. You can even hover over this and go exactly what you want. So let's make this darker. Let's make the secondary one darker for the tile. And yeah, I think that's much better. So just play around with it. Okay, sweet. So now it's time for our actual music and our audio player. So what we need here is I'm going to create a new folder called models. 
and we're going to start off with a song so if you think about a song i'm going to need four things i want to know the song name i want to know the artist name the image path for the artwork and also the audio path And let's create another model here called Playlist Provider. And so firstly, we're going to have a playlist of songs. And you can see if I import the song, what we just created, we can create our first song. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to my desktop and I've got this assets folder and I have a folder called audio and I just have an mp3 file here. So you can grab any mp3 file and place it into a folder like this. And I've also got this image folder for the album artwork. So just get any kind of square image. So I'm going to go to my project and just drag this assets folder in. And then if I come back to my code, we have to tell it in our popspec.yaml that we are importing assets. So if you scroll down, you can see this assets that you have to uncomment. And so we're going to import two things. So assets audio and assets images. Cool. So just as an example, let's create three songs here. And I'm just going to title this up to be whatever. Okay, sweet. So I have these three songs. The next thing we need to know is the current song that's playing, but the index of it. So if I say like zero, that's the first song here. If I say one, that's this song. Two is that song. So with this current song index, we're going to control which song we're playing. And so I'm just going to put some nice comments here. I need a section for getters and then setters. So let's get away to return the playlist and also the current song index. Sweet, so let's try to come back to our homepage and display the playlist of songs in a list. So to do that, we are going to use a consumer widget to consume this data. And we're going to return a list view builder. And whoops, since we have a new provider, we should come back to our main.dart file and add in this new provider. So we've currently only got the theme provider. So what you can do here is say multi provider and just specify both the theme as well as the playlist provider. Sweet. So if I come back down here, so what I'm going to do here is before we display this list view, Let's firstly get the playlist. And then now we can say in the item count, we're going to say playlist.length. And then we're going to get the individual song by going through all of the indexes for however long this playlist is. And then we can now give it to our list tile UI. So let's just start off with our song name. And you can see if you save it, there it is. And then we can go to the subtitle to give it the artist name. And then we can start decorating this up. Even the leading, we can give it the image. Cool. And then finally, the on tap. So when we tap on one of these tiles, we want to go to the song. So let's just create that at the top real quick. I'm going to start off by getting the playlist provider. And just initialize it.
And then here's our method for going to a particular song. So with a given song index. So firstly, let's update the current song index in our provider. And then we're going to navigate to the song page. And whoops, we forgot to create the setter method. So let's just do that real quick. So we just want to set the new current index. So if I come back here, we can give it the new song index. And then we're going to navigate to our song page, which we haven't created. So let's just create that real quick. Cool, so if I save this and I click on one of these tiles, nice, we can go to a song page. So now what we need to do is to just decorate up this song page. So the kind of design aesthetic I wanna go for is a new morphism style. So I'm just gonna create a new component called new box, just standing for new morphic box. And let's just say I want to know a child when I create this. And so let me show you how to do this. So in the containers decoration, the color is going to be the same as the background color. And the trick here is to just work with a couple shadows. So I'm just gonna have a dark shadow on the bottom right and a lighter shadow on the top left. So we can give it a slightly darker color here. give it a bit of a blur and we're going to offset this. So what this means is instead of just being right in the middle, we're going to change the position of the shadow a little bit. So this will, so four, four will make it on the bottom right. Let's copy this, change this to white and make this negative, negative should be top left. So just to show you what we just created in our song page in the body, let's just create in the middle a new box and maybe just give it an icon. And so you can see there it is. Now, I think we should add some padding. And the corners are pretty sharp, so let's curve the corners. And, ooh, and the final thing is the scaffold should have a background color. So the background and the foreground of this is actually the same, and it's the shadows that are creating this 3D effect. And I think this looks pretty cool. Sweet, so now that we have a new Morphic box, we can start to decorate up our song page. So let's have a big column. And I'm going to have a custom app bar. And then the album artwork, the song duration progress, and then the playback controls. So just before we fill this out, let's grab this entire scaffold and wrap it in a consumer widget just to consume the playlist provider data. So like I said, I wanna create my own custom app bar. So let's get rid of this guy. And let's start off with a row for a back button, maybe like a title and then a menu button. Sweet, there it is. So it's scrunched up in the corner. So let's actually wrap this in a safe area widget, which makes us avoid the notches and stuff like that. And then let's also space between to spread it out. And let's add some padding as well. Cool, and then below that, let's use one of our new morphic boxes. And for the child, let's give it the image asset. And just to try this out, right, I wanna to go to one of my images. And there it is, and you can see it's got a nice effect around it. 
and we can say number two, number three. Cool, so all of our images are currently working. And the image itself is quite sharp, so I'm gonna wrap this in a clip R rec to change the border radius. Now below the image, we wanna have the song and artist name. And also maybe like a heart icon for the like and not like. Sweet, and then below that, we are in need of a progress bar for the duration. So firstly, in a row, I want to know the start time. And then we're gonna have a couple icons, so the shuffle and the repeat, and also the end time at the end. So for now, I'm just gonna put in some blank values just to get the UI down first. Now let's space this evenly, or space between. And then now below this, we need a slider. So you can see it's like this little progress bar thing. And so we can specify the min and the max and let's say the value is 50 and I'm going to change up this active color to be green and this is looking pretty good. Now I actually think we should take this slider out of this padding. Cool and just for this UI, if it's a, since it's a music player, I actually don't want that big ass circle as the thumb so you can wrap this in a slider theme and then get this thumb and then make it zero sweet i think that looks better cool and then the last thing we need is just a playback control so let's have another big row and then we're going to have a skip previous a play pause button and then a skip forward so let's just try one of these out. So if I get another new morphic box and go to the previous icon. And I'm just gonna expand this to fill up the entire space. And also wrap it in a gesture detector so that we can tap on this. So let's copy this and create a few more. Now for the middle one, I actually want to change up the flex to be two, which means it should be double the size. And then we can just use some size boxes in between just to create some gaps. Cool, and then once you're done, if you come to the very overall column here, I'm just gonna main axis alignment to the center, which I think looks the best. Sweet, now, oh, we actually had this back button, which, which we didn't specify the functionality. So let's say, let's just pop it. Go back to the previous. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, one thing is, if I go to another song, it should reflect these changes, but currently we have it all fixed. And hard coded in. So you can see like this thing is hard coded in. 
So what we're going to do is grab this whole thing and then open up these curly braces and we're going to return it anyway. But just before we return the scaffold, we're going to get the playlist and then we're going to get the current song. So let's firstly get the playlist and then we're going to get the current song. And then we can go to this image asset and just go to the current songs, album, art, image path. And same thing for the text, right? Instead of hard coding this value, we can say current song and then the song name. And then the current song and then the artist name. Sweet, and I think that should be good. If I just save this, we can now go to the appropriate ones. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is we need to code up the audio player. So open up your terminal and we're going to add this package in flutter pub add audio players. This is the most popular one in flutter. So we're going to go with this. And so just have a bit of a plan about what we're going to do is we're going to have an audio player and we're going to control the durations. So like how long it is and stuff like that. We're going to have a constructor. And initially we're not playing and then these are the main playback controls. So play the song, pause the song, resume, and then this will be helpful as well. This pause and this pause or resume, which I'll explain later. And then also the other main thing is seek to a specific position in the current song so that we can use our thumb to drag around to different positions. And then just a couple more play next song. Play previous song. Listen to the durations. And then we can finally dispose of this audio player. So looks like a lot we need to get through, but each of these is quite simple. So let's just start this off. Let's get our audio player. And for the duration, I need to know two, I want to know two different durations. So the current duration and the total duration for the song. So when we create this constructor, so when we create this playlist provider, we want to just automatically start listening to the duration for any changes. So we're going to listen for the total duration listen for the current duration and then we can also listen for when the song is completed. And then let's come back to the beginning. So let's just create a quick Boolean and say, is playing false at the beginning? And a quick method to play a song. So firstly, I need to know what path it is. So let's go to the current songs audio path. And if it was playing something already, just stop it. And then we can play this asset.
Now pause is also similar, just pause it and just change up the boolean and the notify listeners. We're going to resume. Now we have both of these pause and resumes which work individually, but if we are actually in the UI, we are going to click on this button to pause and resume. So it's actually going to be one button. So it's going to be helpful for us to just create this pause or resume. So for this one, we're just going to check if it's playing, then we're going to pause it. Otherwise we're going to resume it. And then for the seek, we just need to know as an input, the duration. So where are we going to? And then just go to that position. And then we want to play to the next song. So all we need to do when we want to go to the next song is just update the index. So this current song index, as long as it's not null and it's not the last song, just increment by one. And then if it is the last song, let's just go back to the first song. So it can just loop. And then similarly for the previous song. Now when it comes to the previous song or the left skip previous button, if we're currently in the middle of a song, then if you actually press the left arrow, it should go to the beginning of the song before you skip to the previous song, if you know what I mean. So if it's more than two seconds, like if more than two seconds have passed, then we're just gonna restart the current song and then otherwise, we're going to go to the previous song. Cool, and then for this song completion, once a particular song is completed, then we're going to just play the next song. Okay, cool. Now let's just um, finish off by writing all the getters. So I want to get the bo boolean for is playing, the current duration, the total duration, and that's it. And for this setter, when we update the current song index, as long as the new index isn't null, then we're just going to play this song at the new index. So this should just work out nicely. So when you import a new package, by the way, it's a good idea to just kill the project and just open it again, just to make sure. But let's check this out. So if I click on one of these songs, then, then yay, you can hear the music playing. Okay, so there's actually no way for us to pause the music right now in our UI. So I'm just gonna kill the app and restart it. And let's just fill this out, right? So the slider, you know, the max slider, we can now give it the total duration. And then where we are currently, we can give it the current duration. And this on change method is for when the, during when the user is dragging the slider around. But what I'm more interested in is the on change end. And this one is for when the sliding has finished. So when we go to that position in the song duration. Cool, and then let's come back down to these playback controls. So for the skip previous, we can give it the correct method. And we can give it the pause and resume. For the icon, this one, we actually wanna change up the icon. So if it is playing, then let's give the pause icon and then otherwise give it the play arrow. And then finally, the skip forward method. Okay. okay, sweet, so let's save this. And if I click on a song, it starts playing and you can see it says pause because it's playing right now. And you can see the green bars moving as well. And you can also seek to a different position. 
and we can also skip the songs and looks like all the functionality is working fine. Now, one of the last things we need to do is just this time value and then go to the current duration and just convert it to a string. Same thing for the total duration. And you can see we we print it out. It looks like it's working, but it looks quite ugly. So I'm just going to come up to the top and we're just going to have a quick method here to convert this duration into like a nice minute seconds string. So let's call it format time and just accept a duration. And so what I'm going to do is firstly just get the remainder if you divide it by 60 just to get the two digit seconds. And the formatted time is just going to be the duration in minutes and then the two digit seconds. So let's come back down and format these guys. And whoops, there's an extra bracket. Cool. And it's not quite perfect. Like if it's a single digit second, we should add in an extra zero on the left. Yeah, I like that. That looks much better. And let's just test all of these functionalities out. I think it's all working. Except for the going previous, it works when you're in the middle, but we can't skip to the previous. Let's come back to that method and oh, for some reason we didn't fill this one out. When we are already past two seconds, then we're going to just restart the song. And sweet, looks like everything's working. Now just one last thing is let's just check the dark mode. And it looks like it's working fine, except for this new new morphic box. So let's come over here. And the background's good. Let's just grab a quick boolean for the dark mode. And let's just say, okay, if it's dark mode, then give it a black color for this one. If it's a dark mode, then give it a dark gray. And that's looking pretty good. Sweet, so that's how you code up a minimal music player app. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, just comment below and I'll try to help you out. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.